Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here, owner of Strategic Test Prep. I am a longtime test prep instructor with 1,500 plus SAT scores, and I work with hundreds and hundreds of students to help them boost their scores every day. So I've been looking at a bunch of tests lately, really drilling down on new concepts that are folded into the SAT this year. And I have a great idea as to what's going to be on your December SAT. So I'm going to give you guys 10 things that you need to know for the December test, starting with number one, know your punctuation rules. You will have questions on the writing section about punctuation. So know that a colon needs to have a complete sentence on the left-hand side and then on the right side, anything goes. Typically, the other side of the colon is just describing more about the first side or explaining more about the first side. With a semicolon, you need to have two complete sentences and also a semicolon can separate items in a list now so if you have items in a list especially if they have commas in them for instance like if you're listing cities london england paris france etc you can use semicolons to separate those items in a list so just know that's fair game now they've never tested that before the third rule of punctuation is pick a hyphen if there's another hyphen already in the sentence. Now, this only applies to punctuation questions, not different types of questions. And lastly, a comma cannot separate two complete sentences. So when you get to a punctuation question, you can use process of elimination, leave a trail, make sure that you're reading to see where the complete sentences are at, and then you can pick the best one. Next thing, I've seen this come up a lot. I remember it was on my October SAT. Listen, if they ask you to combine two sentences effectively, this is a quick, easy point. Just pick the shortest one and move on. They like to be short, sweet, concise, and effective on the writing section. So you cannot fail if you go with the one with the least amount of words in it. Okay, guys, they've been asking way more about trig lately. So make sure you know so Katoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. I saw a question about tangent on a recent SAT and also about cosine on a recent SAT. I even uh, looked at the international October test and yes, it was on there. So make sure you're ready. The biggest thing I would say on problems like that is if they talk to you about a triangle and then they ask about cosine or sine, make sure you draw a picture. You guys, please draw pictures. Don't just sit there and try to visualize it in your head. That's a huge math strategy and it will help you get these questions right every time. All right, they've been loving systems of equations and wanting to know how many solutions are in each system of equations. So you will get a question like that on your test. Just know if all the variables can cancel out, there's no solution to that system. If one equation is in proportion to the other equation, maybe it's three times bigger, it's dilated somehow with a scalar multiple, there's infinitely many solutions because it's the same line. So everything will work in both. If neither of those scenarios apply, chances are there's probably one solution. You can actually solve it through. You'll get something for X and you'll get something for Y. Now be careful. Just because you get something for X and something for Y doesn't mean there's two solutions. There's one solution at that coordinate point, X comma Y. So pick one. They will ask you to isolate a variable. So they're gonna give you an equation with one variable on one side of the equal sign. And then they're gonna ask you, what is this in terms of all the rest of it? So I'm gonna demonstrate with a really tough one right now up on the screen. As you can see, I'm working through it. The biggest thing is you wanna to try to get that variable all by itself. It might be buried in stuff in a fraction or in a parentheses. So you gotta get it out of there. You may have to factor it out of something to be able to isolate it. So just be ready, you will have an isolating a variable question. You will have to solve an absolute value expression. Now, typically with absolute value expressions, you drop off those absolute value signs and you write two equations. One's equal to the positive answer and then you make the other one equal to the negative answer. However, on the last test, they threw in a trick question, a little twist or a curveball, which the SAT likes to do a lot. And they had the absolute value expression equal to a negative number, but guys, you can't get a negative number out of an absolute value. So the answer was zero for that question. Just be just be ready for that. You will have to determine the y-intercept of an exponential function. Now, guys, just remember when you're on the y-axis, your x-coordinate is always zero, okay? So just take zero, put it in for x, you'll find the y-intercept, pretty easy. Or you can match it up to the right graph wherever the y-intercept is. Now, if you have two answer choices with the same y-intercept, then you'll have to, in their graphs, then you'll have to find another point on one of the graphs and plug it into the equation to see which one works. And that's how you can determine which one's right.
All right, this might be simple for some of you guys, but you will have to get an equation to the line. They might give you two points on the line, so you'll have to use your slope equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then after you do that, you have to solve for b. You still won't know the y-intercept. So pick one of the points, put it in for x and y. You have your slope already, and then b is the only unknown, and you can go ahead and get the y-intercept. Also, they've been asking a lot about perpendicular lately. So just know if you have a slope of 3, a line perpendicular to that is negative 1 third. You take the negative reciprocal of the slope. If it's parallel, it's the same exact slope, so a parallel line would be 3. Last but not least, you need to know the quadratic formula. So if you don't know the quadratic formula, get a tattoo of it on your forehead. Do what you need to do. Maybe record yourself saying it over and over and then play it while you're sleeping at night. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Did I say the square root? I hope so. Anyways, know that. And as a bonus, if any of you guys are trying to get above a 700 in the math, the discriminant is just the b squared minus 4ac part, and that's going to help you determine how many real solutions there are. So if you see a question, which is very likely on your December test, they ask how many real solutions are there, and it's a quadratic equation, then use the discriminant. If it's positive, there's two real solutions. If it's zero, there's one real solution. And if it's negative, well, there's no real solutions because you can't take the square root of a negative number. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you get ready for your December test. I am super excited for you. You're doing all the right things. If you're watching this video, it means that you care and you are prepping. Make sure you look at as many recent SAT tests as you possibly can right now. The math has changed since 2016. You wanna know what's being tested right now? And I'm pretty sure those things that I mentioned in this video will be on the test. So you'll have to let me know after you take it. I can't take it. They won't let me. I'm not going to college. So best of luck. And yeah, tell me, tell me how it went.